morning, the morning prayers. We're about ready to start Pesukei de Zimra, right? We've covered all the morning uh, blessings, uh, including the blessings over the Torah. We mentioned that, uh, by the way, I did manage this morning to recite, uh, inspired by our discussion, the uh, section called Accepting the Sovereignty of Heaven, with the beautiful prophecies about being gathering the exiles, and uh, <clears throat> even a little bit of the uh, Akedah, the binding of Isaac. So uh, thank you for that. And um, I hope you also got, got up early enough. <laughs> well, you're making uh, improvements every day. You're going to get earlier and earlier, and you'll be able to recite all of the prayers, uh, even the ones that are not essential, as essential, as I was saying, trying to teach you the difference between the actual blessings. We counted, I think, 26 Baruch Atah Hashems, right? In the section leading up to, really what in many synagogues is the beginning of the prayer service, which starts with Pesukei de Zimra, the verses of praise. So um, mm-hmm. this we covered yesterday, and uh, we're going to start today soon on the verses of praise. But before that, I have a question that's been coming up in terms of the timing for the various blessings. And we call them morning blessings. Okay, what, how do we define morning? And what if you get up early? What if you get up late? And so I think we're, we're going to talk more about getting up late another time because uh, uh, we're going to be speaking about the Shema. And the Shema has, has, is famous that it has an end time you're supposed to say Shema when, you, when you're getting up, not all day long, but when you're getting up. And so that's the end of Shema time, the end of Tefillah. What about the beginning? The beginning. Well, how does the, the day begin? So in, in Judaism, the day and the night goes, goes back to Bereshit. There is day and night. It's clear to all of us there's day and night. The transition, though, in between them is complicated. It's not... One second, black, and the other second, light. Mm-hmm. There's what we call, in English, it's called twilight, mm-hmm. just in between. So just like there's a twilight in the evening, usually we say that, you know, the, the uh, dusk. Yeah. Dusk, it's an English word. An English word which means twilight. Ah, it, so I'll, I'll give you the Hebrew words in a second. I was saying that there's also a similar sort of literally, gray area in the morning time between when is the end of the night and the beginning of the morning. Mm -hmm. To keep it simple, of course, you know, we could talk about this for days, (laughs) but to keep it simple, I'm just going to do a little chart here on the board and explain to you that there is um, something we're going to use the terms dawn, which uh, we're using that term for a lot Ah, shachar. Shachar means, you know what shacharit means, right? So, alot hashachar is the rise. Alot means to go up, like aliyah, like aliyah. So, alot hashachar, when the the dawn dawn rises, that's the first light. We could say that equals the, the first light. And this is even before... This is even before the sun comes up. Hashachar. 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 Shachar is morning. Yes, shachar. The rise of the morning. A lot of shachar. It's also connected to the word shachar, right? It's a good question because shachar is black, so it's kind of the opposite. Shachar is morning when when there's a beginning of light. So it's strange that it, it, it's yeah. it's. <coughs> I don't know why. That's a good question about the etymology. Shachar means black, which doesn't fit. Doesn't fit this meaning. This means. This, this, uh, so that's the, the first inkling of day, and then all the way, the end of the day is going to be what we call Tzet Ha-Kol-Chavim, which literally means the coming out of the stars. Kochav is star. 
stars coming out. Just making it simple, of course, there's many more uh, details. So we, this is the day, the largest <coughs> expanse possible for the day. You start all the way, the first hint of light, and then here, when you can see stars, you can only see stars if there's no light. Right. However, <coughs> we all know that a tiny little bit of light doesn't really make it light enough to work, to, to, to travel. And there's so, we have within that larger framework of the most expansive definition of day, we have a smaller, uh, we have a smaller definition of day. And that is from uh, sunrise and that's called what is sunrise called? Yeah. No, 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 no. The opposite. Nets. 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 Ha. Chama. Chama is another word for sun. Chama is the sun. So when the sun comes up, sunrise, that's really when, right, when the ball of the sun peaks up above the horizon, that is for sure day. <laughs> that's, that's the beginning of the day without any question. And when does it end? Obviously. Sunset. Sunset. What's that called in Hebrew? Shekia. Right? Shekia. The sunset. There's another name for, for sunrise, it's called Zericha. The the uh, radiance of the sun. The Zroach is to radiate. So we have two systems of when the day begins and when the day ends. It's either from sunrise to sunset, or it's, if you want to be the most expensive, it's from dawn, the first light, until the stars come out, which is the end of all light. And what you have in between, what I was describing before, this is called Bain Hashemashot. What is Hashemesh? Shemesh. Oh, Shemesh. From the plural oh, Shemesh. It's in, almost like in between. Two, in between the suns. Main is in between. Right. So this is the sun. Uh, uh, yeah. So it's it's what we call twilight. Similarly, we have over here. There's no name for it though, but there is a period, which is uh, twilight, just like this period. Yes. Okay. Well, there's one more calculation. One more important point. Up till now, everything's very symmetric. I think it's a very clear structure to, to help us understand how well, we're going to see what this translates into in terms of halakha. But <clears throat> the two ways of defining the day, sunrise to sunset, and first light to no light, those are uh, astronomically equivalent with the twilight in between these two periods. Twilight in the morning, twilight in the, uh, in the evening. So far so good? Is that clear? One more uh, time, <coughs> which the Talmud mentions <coughs> regarding tzitzit. Tzitzit, we just learned about it, uh, last week in the parasha, I had a parasha Shlach, and it says that you the, the purpose of the tzitzit is to wear this blue fringe on your on your uh, on the corners of your of your wings uh, your wings yeah the wings of your garment right and uh, you should have a blue string there and you should see them so the mitzvah only applies when you can see ah when does it and so the, the Talmud has a few definitions about how do you define how much light 
You need to see. You need in order to see, and to mm -hmm. see what? Distinguish. One of the definitions is when you can distinguish between the blue and the, and the white thread. And the assumption is that it's somewhere, somewhere in here. <laughs> in between. Mm -hmm. This is called, in Hebrew, me from the time she that yakir when you can recognize mishi yakir when you can recognize between the blue string and the, and the and the white string. So there's a definition of a time. It's about uh, half an hour after dawn. Hmm. Uh, the first light. It's not enough to really make distinguish uh, to distinguish them. But about half an hour later, there is this time. It's called Nishi Yakir. <coughs> and that's the first time you can put on your tzitzit and make a bracha on a tzitzit. It has to be enough light to distinguish colors, to distinguish between the blue and the white. Okay? Mm -hmm. <coughs> so let's talk about the, uh, the morning blessings now, now that we have the structure. Is that clear? Questions? Rabbi. Yes. Uh, I heard someone say that uh, the point is it is like when you're able to see the next, I mean the person. Yes, the three opinions in the Talmud goes way back to the sages, 2,000 years old. Three-way machloket. What do you have to recognize? What's the yakir? What are you trying to distinguish? One opinion is between the blue and the white strings, like I said. The other one is what you said, that you'd be able to see a, a, a person uh, distinguish, you know, John from, from Tony, uh, tell who the person is from a distance of four amot. The third opinion is, what's the third opinion? Uh, you can distinguish between uh, a dog and, a, and a, uh, um, a wolf. A wolf and a dog, very similar structures. So you need a little more light to be able to distinguish between them. Okay, we, well, the standard is we talk about the distinguishing the colors of the blue and the white. That's, I think, the halakha. Uh, it's somewhere in between. This, the dawn and the actual sunrise. Okay? So now, I'm just giving you a bottom line here. This is really bare bones. <laughs> but uh, I hope this is clear up to now. The structure of the day. You've well, seen this before? Oh, good, good, good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, there are many, many uh, calendars, Jewish calendars, where, where they give you all these different times each and every day. Right? Uh, for example, today, what's the, what's the time of the sunrise today? What time is today sunrise? 5.30 approximately. Approximately today, it's uh, 5.30. Uh, maybe 5.34, I'm not sure, 5.32. It's approximately 5.30. What time is sunset today? Mm. 7.40, yeah. 7.50 maybe? Yeah, around this, yeah. Is that right? What does it say? Israel, what do you have there for sunrise and sunset? For sunset, sunset, 747. 747, ah, is that the airplane? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to do it. Okay, and, and sunrise? Sunrise. 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 We don't have the iPhone, we don't WhatsApp, just see the... You see, that's right, yeah. <laughs> you can look outside the window. Yes. <laughs> of course, what happens if you live next to a mountain? Yeah. Mm. You look out the window and it's blocked by a mountain. So it's a problem. That's why we have these calendars. Because uh, sometimes, what if you live and outside your window is another building? <laughs> mm -hmm. You can't see. So that's why we have the calendar. Uh, the, the, the apps. But uh, anyways, okay, that, and I'll see, I have it here too. One second, right in front of me. My calendar says actually 529. What country were you looking at for sunrise? Was that Jerusalem? Mine says 529. Ah. Anyways. Ah, my calendar's all different. As, uh, what, for Alot Shachar, I have. 3.42 and for Mishiyakir I have 
Okay? And for Tzeta Kochavim, I have 815. That's just for example today. Okay, now who cares? <laughs> what is the matter in terms of halacha? So what can only be done, really, ideally, once the sun rises? What's the halacha that's dependent on the sunrise? The, what's known as prayer, or I'll be more precise, the amidah. There's something called a type of prayer, which is called vatikin. Anybody know what that is? Vatiki means elders, it means pious people. And the Talmud relates that there was a group of very pious people. Today you'll find also. And they, when did they dive in Shachrit? 7? 6.30? 5.30? What's the time? It changes every day. Why? Because they try to have their Amidah exactly at 5.34. Precisely. And it changes. Every day, it, the, the time of the, of the davening will change because you want to time it so that the first moment of sunrise, when the sun rises, that's when you address God. You're speaking to God. You stand in front of God. That's what Amida means, to stand in front of God. So that essence of prayer, that section of prayer which, where you're standing before God, should be started exactly 5.30. Sometimes I go to this... Vatikin minyan, I'll write it down. It's uh, the people who pray in this style are called Vatikin, which means pious or elders. And uh, we, we prepare, we, re- we, we pray, we're in the middle of the prayers, and now all of a sudden everybody's quiet, and they're looking out the window. Because they're waiting for the sun to rise. They've got up until the Amidah, but they don't want to start until... Sun rises, and the first moment they see the sun, then they say, they start the Amidah, they're silent, Shmon uh, Esrei. Okay? So this is ideal. You're really not supposed to pray before the Amidah, before 534, for example, today. If you need to get to work earlier, there's room to be lenient, there is such a tradition that people... In agricultural times, people would start working much earlier because it would get so hot later in the afternoon. So they wanted to work even before, and so you have to dive in before. It can be allowed as long as you're past one of these times, mm-hmm. right? But uh, ideally, if you don't have any pressing need, you should never say the Amidah before Net Achama, before Zricha, before sunrise. Okay? So today you want to get up early. Early you should daven, maybe start as, uh, if you start at 5, you'll get up to the Amidah by 5.34, right? My clock has 5.29, so whatever it is, approximately. Uh, it's hard to know precisely, a few minutes in either direction, there's a tradition that that's considered to be still, ke vatikin, you're praying like those pious people. Okay, that's halacha number one, is regarding... The prayer, the daily morning prayer, should only be started after sunrise. Yeah. Uh, I like to ask something. Uh, when I remember in Kiev, I don't know where I'm going. Sure. All the morning, it's Sephardic uh, place. Okay. okay. Um, mostly, like here, I'm one of the first people who are coming. Nice. Very <laughs> yeah. nice. Yes. And then we sit down, oh. and they have uh, a timetable. A paper they can see the exactly time when you have to put on your uh, talit. That's this. What it's, I said. This you is this. Appeal. Okay. This is what I was showing. Yeah. Okay. This is this yeah, moment. That's that for the okay. talit. Okay. And then they'll also have a timetable for the sunrise. Yes. Right. Exactly. Okay. Thanks. So the earliest you can put on your talit is at this time, right? <clears throat> Even if you want to come an hour early, that's fine, right? Five thirty, four thirty. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Well, I just now I asked, uh, so let's say I, I took the bus at 6 o'clock, so I will be on the bus, so can, can I say the, the Pesuket is in the bus, sure. so when I reach here, I do my Shima and Amidah. 
Yes, the only problem is you're really not supposed to make an interruption in between. So you shouldn't be talking to people. But if you don't talk to anybody, <laughs> then you can start in one place and continue on the way. It's not ideal, but if you have to travel, that makes sense. You're really not supposed to interrupt between the, the Psuke de Zimra and the next section, the blessings of the Shema. But uh, sometimes you have to. That saves you time. And you're not going to be interrupting by speech, by speaking to anybody. That's okay. It's okay. Other laws. Now, the laws of Shema are different. What's the first time you can say the Shema? Not sunrise. It's actually before sunrise, right? The earliest time you can say the Shema I'd say that's over here as well. But it's after Meshi Yalkiyon, no? Yeah, we don't really have any other definition of time. So uh, theoretically, Shema could be said from here, but just to be safe, we'll say this is the earliest time for Shema. Now, of course, what are you going to do in between the Shema and the Amidah? You're not supposed to have any break. You're supposed to go straight from the Shema, blessing, after the Shema, Ga'al Yisrael, the and then immediately start the Amidah. And so, right. you're going to be doing Shema immediately before the sunrise, and the Amidah immediately after the sunrise. So these Vatikin Minyanim have two uh, benefits. One is that you say the Shema before the sunrise, and one is that you say the Amidah after, the first thing after the sunrise. Now what happened, there's an opinion in the Talmud that you must say the Shema only up until sunrise. That's the end time of the Shema. So that's another reason to daven vatikim. Luckily, for people who get up late, the standard halacha follows <laughs> the other opinion. That you can say Shema up until the third, the end of the third hour. Right. Right. When I when I say third hour, I don't mean uh, you know I can't give you a, a specific time. It changes because it changes. We count twelve hours from sunrise to sunset, divided into twelve, and at the end of the third hour, that's when the latest time you should be saying the Shema. But if you do it like... Not precise, Any time in between here is fine. Yeah. But, but if you do the third, not to be precise, but like 10, 9, between 10 and 9, not like between... Eight. That's fine. As long as it's before the end of the third hour, you're good to go. But 11 is behind, right? It depends on the, the calendar. It depends on when the sunrise was and when the sunset was. Now, to make things more complicated, I'll just mention it. I won't put it on the board. And uh, Israel, just to understand, what you're looking at is one of these Jewish calendars. Surprisingly, there is a question mark about when precisely is the third hour. There are two ways of calculating the, the, the timing of these 12 hours. What I just did on the board between sunrise and sunset is perhaps the majority opinion today of the way to divide up. The, they're called halachic hours. But there's another opinion. And the other opinion is, I think you can guess it already. I'm not going to put it on the board to confuse you. The other opinion is, what do we divide into 12? The entire larger expanse of the day we divide into 12. So if we're dividing this into 12, each hour, of course, is going to be longer. And then that where the end of the third hour is going to be a little bit different. And that's why we have in many of these timetables two opinions for when the end of the third hour is. Yeah, usually this opinion, the way I described it, is a little later, like a half an hour later. Phew. <laughs> so I say the majority follows that, that opinion. Kids get up late. They wake up in the morning today. The time is for uh, uh, the end of uh, Kriyat Shema, 9.07. 9. 
307. So you have between 5.30, yeah, or you have between 4.37, Afterwards, you're not really fulfilling the mitzvah properly. Um, the mitzvah Shema must be said. Our time, you could still say Shema afterwards. I think yesterday we said you can recite the Shema many times a day. It's a pasuk in the Torah. They're psukim from the Torah. But the mitzvah of reciting the Shema, when you get up, it has to be completed by 9.07. Uh, today, just as an example, today's calendar. But there's two opinions. The other opinion says 8.11. Or 8.11. That's almost an entire, an entire hour earlier. What's the difference? I told you, that's the, when you make the calculation of the 12 hours gets divided okay, up. Yeah, okay, okay. That's, yeah. that's, this, this, uh, that's this question mark. We said the two ways of, of defining, of splitting up the, the hours of the day, the 12 hours. Okay? But we're not going to put this on the board just to confuse you, so I'll just so, leave, leave it at that. So when you say the first time this is not, let's say, at 9.30, you're too late. You're too late. You're not fulfilling the mitzvah properly. You still can do it, but you don't still fulfill can the do mitzvah. it, but you don't fulfill right. the mitzvah properly. Good. Okay. In its proper time. So you need to get up. Good. <laughs> yes, you got to get up in time for sure. Not, not uh, you must say shema before. Sometimes when my kids are uh, are uh, you know kids have a hard time waking up, adolescents, teenagers, and beyond, and they're sleeping. Maybe it's they're on vacation now. Today, I don't know if you heard. Schools are on strike. Today? Today. Oh, really? Yeah, no school. Um, Whole country. Balagam. A million and a half children. No school. I thought it's a, it's a summer break. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's coming soon. <laughs> but that's a big question. The summer break. Oh, your kids, they want to sleep in. They don't have to go. To, school does, starts at 8 o'clock here. Yeah, right. But they don't have to go to school. So they sleep till 8. They sleep till 9. <gasps> they sleep... Oh, Chofesh, yeah. yeah, they have vacation, not yet. Now it's a strike, Shvita. <laughs> but uh, soon it'll be Chofesh. Anyways. So uh, difficult for the parents. The, of course, difficult for the parents. They want to help their child do the mitzvot. They say it's 9 o'clock. <gasps> it's going to be 9.07 soon. What do they do? So they go wake up the child. They come wake up. You have to say Shema. So what does he do? Washes his hands. Goes back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Better than nothing. Yeah, they fulfill the mitzvah. Yeah, they fulfill the mitzvah and then uh, they need to sleep. They need to sleep. But there's more. There's a few other halachot. We've only spoken about two the Shema and the Amida. What about. Uh, is there an end time for the Amida? So the end time for the Amida is until the fourth hour. So you said the Shema, woken up. <laughs> you have to be saying the uh, and the fourth hour today. If this was uh, nine oh seven, this works out to be ten eighteen. Where's my green? The fourth hour is ten eighteen. So you must daven your amidah shacharit. Before 1018, for it to be done in its proper time. Okay, good morning, Pinchas. I know you're walking in the middle. It's uh, very complicated here, but uh, we're trying to talk about the halachic day and, and, the, and how it works out. Now, the Shema and Amidah, these are mitzvot, which we know about, we haven't spoken about. What have we spoken about? We've spoken about the tzitzit. So we have our, the earliest time you could put on the tzitzit, Mishe Yakir when you can distinguish. And that's a 437. What about the morning blessings? What about Psukei de Zimra? So here, the answer is, for the most part, that they started Alot HaShacha, at dawn. You can say the morning blessings from here. 
except for the tzitzit <laughs> and the tefillin. Commonly, what we do, since there's only, you know, like, uh, just a, uh, maybe an hour between the two, and how early you're going to get up anyways, you, you start really praying and say the morning blessings at the time that you could put on your talit okay. and your tefillin. So, uh, sometimes we, uh, we delay it. But technically, I believe that from Alot HaShachar, from the first dawn, for the first light, you can say, start saying your morning blessings. Okay, from Alot HaShachar. But now you're talking uh, only about the suke and this... Uh, no, morning blessings, 1 okay. through 26, what we've covered okay. in the so last few also days. also the Asher Natan Leshavit. Yes, Shalatan Sechvi, those fifth, that list of 15 plus right. 1, right? Yes. And Elokai okay. Neshama. Okay. And Al Netilat Yadayim, the first one we start with Al Netilat Yadayim. You really should be only saying that after the first uh, light. Okay? The morning blessings. As you can see, usually you do morning blessings and then you do the, in here there's Psuke de Zimra, Shema, and then the Amidah. But you're going to be usually putting it as close as possible to sunrise. Because the Shema has to be adjacent to the Amidah. And what did I tell uh, Stephen here before? You really shouldn't have an interruption between Psuke de Zimra and the Shema. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, this time period of Netzach Hamad, the Zricha, the sunrise, that's like the anchor for all of the morning prayers. And uh, so if it takes you a half an hour to get up to Midah, so you start half an hour before. If it takes you an hour, so you start an hour before. But the earliest time you could start really is, is at dawn. But then you're going to have uh, between 3.42 and 5.34. Two hours? That's extreme. Some people pray for two hours uh, before the Amidah. But that's, a, that's a, a, quite a, a, long, uh, a long service. Most people start a little bit later. You don't need more than an hour to get up until the Amidah. Usually half an hour to get up until the Amidah. Also, one, one question. Yeah. So, uh, so the Shema have to be said the third hour after the Nets or after the Ashafar? Machloket. 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 Machloket means it's a dispute. Oh, so it's always a dispute. But There's two ways of calculating. Everybody agrees that the third hour is the correct time. After How to calculate? You calculate between here and here, or between here and here. That's the machloket. That's the machloket. Is it, what did we say, 907 or 811? What? I, I took it out because it's a machloket how to calculate the third hour. And if you take the linear one, the linear opinion? 907. And that's done from the nets. From three hours from the nets, correct. Three right. hours from the nets. Yeah. But you can start the Shema earlier. Machon. Everybody agrees it's even ideal. Cool. It's even ideal to say the Shema before the Nets. But if you don't wake up on time, it's fine. It's still kosher any time before 9.07, before the end of the third hour. Okay, so uh, you can see, Ravid, why I needed a few more minutes to describe <laughs> this to you. I yeah. could just answer you in one second. But thank you very second. much. You give but this is much clearer yes. now. Uh, the earliest it should be really uh, starting your prayers then is like at 4.30. <laughs> but the first, earliest you should be saying the Amidah is 5.34 or 5.30 today. Okay, that's called Tfilah Kevatikin, like the elders or like the pious ones. The, the reason why I'm asking this sometimes yeah. when I'm going to visit the Knesset, I need more time to read everything. And I like to be with the group. So I'm coming earlier. Right. And I'm beginning by my own, but then I was thinking, oh, it's still dark outside. Right. I cannot. As long it. as you're past dawn, and you can right. in the calendar, yes. when it's dawn, you can say almost everything except for the Amidah. Right. The Amidah, ideally, should be said only after sunrise. sunrise. Yes. Sunrise. I yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Good. You do okay. okay. Uh, putting on a talit is a mitzvah. You can do it at home. You could do it in the Bet Knesset. The custom is to wear the talit for shacharit, for the morning prayers. Uh -huh. uh, and so the talit and the tefillin go together. 
So from 4.37, Mishiyakil, it's about an hour before sunrise, then you can put on your talit and tefillin mm-hmm. and start your prayers, the morning blessings, the de Zimra, the Shema, the blessings under the Shema, and you're ready for the Abidah as soon as the sun peaks up over the horizon. Mm-hmm. The minyan is when you're gathered together with ten people. Uh, there are some mitzvot which can only be done with ten people, with a minyan. Mm-hmm. But like putting the on the, like the Kaddish, good, like the Baruch like the reading of the Torah can only be done if there's ten people. But the talit and tefillin you can put on by yourself. Oh. Right? You don't need a minyan for that. Many times, the tefillah starts, where I, where I uh, pray, many times the tefillah starts, Less than ten people. You say the morning blessings. Even the psuke de zimra, you don't have ten people. Okay. Usually we hope that there's ten people at the end of psuke de zimra. We're going to see there's baruchu. But sometimes there's not. So you keep going, keep going. And then you wait. Ideally what you need the minyan for is for the amidah. As soon as there are ten people, you can start the amidah together. That's, uh, that's the most important part of the prayers is the amidah, of course. The, Essential. Uh, but if, but if you like you are in a in a show and there is just not enough people to do a minyan, mm-hmm. then you do the amida without the repetition, right? Yeah, everybody can say the amida at home, and you can say it together. You say it in the shul; it's better. Yeah. If you don't have a minyan, you can't do the amida. You can't do the repetition. Okay. Yeah, because one time we had a show of Shabbos in the lens, and we had no minyan. No so minyan. We, so we did, we did, but it was a little bit different. different than right. There are certain no, things no. that can only be done with the minyan. We have to learn it in more detail. What those are, you mentioned a few of them, Kagadish, Barhu, uh, the Chazara, the repetition of, of the, it can only be done if there's ten. So but there's a few more. going out of the street to look away. Oh, where's the tenth person, <laughs> right? <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> it isn't possible, and everyone was a little bit difficult to do that. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. Okay. <clears throat> there's one part of this uh, offering uh, which required a minyan or so, isn't it? I don't think so. Uh, this is a daily sacrifice. It doesn't require me. It doesn't require me. No. It's a pasuk in the Torah. There are verses from the Torah. You can recite them uh, privately. You don't need a minyan for that. But also, like for Shefa Berachot, you also need the minyan, right? Correct. And, yeah, and also, like I see, like, I always in the WhatsApp group, I see when people uh, go to a funeral, they always ask for a minyan also. For a funeral, because you want to say the Kaddish there, of so it's good to have a minyan, so you can say the Kaddish, that's a standard prayer for, uh, for the dead. Yeah. Good. All right. All right, so we have the timing. Is that clear with my colors? And, um, whoever wants to take a picture, you can, uh, before I erase it. <laughs> uh, it's not so pretty, but there's many pictures you can find on the internet, but nothing as clear as this. Now, while we're here, might as well tell you about some other halachot. We've been focusing on the morning blessings, and the Shema, and the Talit. And of course, uh, we have here the, uh, the Talit. We didn't write it down. The Talit and the Tefillin, only at this point, right? Mishiach here. Uh, but what about on the other end? <laughs> what about the end of the day? You have a question? Yeah, somebody say, take, take the tali and the tafeli at home and walk into the zoo. Somebody yeah. go in the zoo. Right. Yeah. Right. Also? Yeah. Both are kosher. <laughs> mm-hmm. Both are kosher. You don't need a minyan to put on a tali and tafeli. The problem is, where do you live? Oh. <laughs> and what's in between your house yeah. and, the, and the Bet Knesset? If you're walking by garbage, oh. something stinky, oh. then how can you be wearing the tefillin? Oh. 
and so many people, maybe you'll be walking by, I don't know, some women that are not dressed and you'll be looking at them. It's not appropriate mm -hmm. for when you're wearing the tefillin. And so, uh, also when you wear the tefillin, you're supposed to have only holy thoughts and you're supposed yes. to be uh, focused. Absolutely. And the longer you wear the tefillin, the chances are your mind will be answering emails on your phone. <laughs> Maybe you'll be doing business. Not so appropriate. Our custom is to only wear the tefillin for the prayers. There's some other customs, but the standard is we wear the tefillin and the tefillin only for the when we're doing our prayers, not for travel. So, if you have a travel between your home and the Bet Knesset, it's less appropriate. Some people do it. Some people have this custom because they want to, they think, when I'm driving, I won't listen to the radio. <laughs> I won't listen to, I'll, I'll be praying. Uh, at least in my mind. Mm. With my lips, if I know it off by heart. So I can do it at the same time. But uh, most people say, if you have any interruption or any, best to take your tefillin in the bag to the Bet Knesset, put it on over there, and then say your prayers all the morning blessings. But, but even then, you need to know when you, what you can do when you have your tefillin and your tefillin. That's I remember right. one time I have been in Bet Knesset. I need to go to the Shehutim. Yeah. And when I want to go out, uh, Ole Khadash is coming with a Talit going to the Shehutim. I said, oh, ah. <laughs> go outside, you cannot do it. Ah. Right, right. People need to know that. Right. Nachon. Nachon, there's, there's rules, halachot, about the holiness of the tefillin. So much. You go to the bathroom, you take off the tefillin, of course. And the custom is to take off the Talit, although it's not the same. Uh, because you wear your tzitzit, you don't take them off when you go to the bathroom. But you can put it inside. Okay, but it doesn't. You're still taking it into the into the toilet. Mm. Right. Okay. So it's not really prohibited to wear the tzitzit. It's prohibited to wear tefillin yes. when you're when you're using the toilet. But uh, the the tzitzit, the, the custom is to take it off. Uh, so it's to, more custom. It's more of a custom. And the difference is, when you come out of the bathroom, do you make another bracha? So on the tefillin, yes, because it was prohibited. It's, it was a clear break from the, the wearing of the tefillin before. You said a bracha when you put on the tefillin, but now you're stopping. You take them off, go to the bathroom. When you put them on again, you have to make a new bracha, mm. but not with the talit. Right. If you just take off the talit mm. in the middle of the services to go to the bathroom, Come back, you put on your tallit, you don't make a new bracha. Because you really didn't have to take it off. Mm -hmm. It's just a custom. Mm -hmm. And so it's not a, a significant break. Okay, okay so there's, there's halachic ramifications of, of these distinctions. Anyways, briefly, let's talk a little bit about the end of the day. We all know that there's um, an afternoon prayer called Mincha. Okay. And that we... And... Alvit, the evening prayers. What are their times? Different. So, the, the custom nowadays, it's changed over time. But the custom nowadays is that we're very, we try to be very careful about the mincha should be done before sunset. Sunset, the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Sunset, you should be done with mincha. There's some, there is another opinion which says, right, it says here, Ben Hashmashot, that means that there's two sunsets. There's two, <laughs> between the sun, <coughs> maybe there's another, a later sunset. So some people actually, they dub Mincha a little bit later. But the standard is, Mincha has to be done uh, up until, right, Mincha up until sunset. You can start all the way back uh, from uh, midday, Chatzot, it's called. What's Chatzot? Chetzi? It's nine. Oh. No, Chatzot is. Did half. Half. Midday. Not midnight. Mid day. Not midnight. Hint. Twelve o'clock. Right? Twelve o'clock. The sixth hour. Yeah. In between, half, right? Half of the day. Half of the day. So Mincha time starts from 
a half an hour plus a half an hour from the end you can dab mincha. Half an hour after chatzot, after midday. You could dab mincha all the way up until when? Up until shkia. Okay? Arvit really should be done. It's at the kochavim, when the stars come out. Yes. What is this about? The half an hour later? It depends on where you are in the globe, how long this twilight is, when do you see the stars? Mm-hmm. In, uh, in Scandinavia, this could be not a half an hour, but three hours. Right. <laughs> the sun, the, the, it never really gets dark mm-hmm. for the entire winter time. It never really, uh, summertime, excuse me. Every time, never gets dark, so it's a problem. But in most places where Jews live, there is some period in between, and then when it gets really dark, that's the time for Arvit. Uh, and one more time, more importantly, the time for Shema is the evening Shema is only after dark, right? Absolutely. And so sometimes what you have. People gather together in Eidav and Mincha right before sunset. Because that's the last time, right? Mm-hmm. Sunset. Eidav and Mincha here. But they don't want to go home right. and come back for Arvit. Mm-hmm. So sometimes what they'll do, they'll play a trick. They'll say, Arvit, we can be flexible. We can do Arvit earlier. Before they set a kochavim. Really, you should only start Alvit and Shema after the stars come out. But it is allowed to dub in Alvit earlier. What do you have to be careful? The Shema. The Shema must be said after. Yes. So even though you're dubbing Alvit, and you're saying the blessings on the Shema, and you're saying the Amidah, you have to go back and repeat again later on the evening time Shema, because it must be said after the stars come out, after Tzedek the Kofi. Yeah. I was wondering because uh, I've been to uh, different uh, shoots and sometimes uh, the mincha is at uh, half past one yeah. and others uh, I also had this over here half past yes, one. Right. and also maybe one hour before we have a beat yeah. so I was wondering why this uh, shoot is range. Doing... You have a whole <laughs> range yeah, mincha time is this whole range all afternoon yes mm-hmm. Okay, but there's a, no, a specific reason why we have it uh, early in the, uh, after 12 o'clock or uh, before. Our mostly week. convenience. It's mostly for convenience. There is a tradition, the Talmud says, it's best to daven mincha as the sun goes down. Like Eliyahu on Mount Carmel. Carmel, very good. Says that he offered his offering to Hashem no, as the sun was going down. A very precious time. So, based on that tradition, we prefer to have mincha late. On the other hand, why not do a mitzvah as soon as you can, earlier in the afternoon? Um, especially if you're going to go party. If you're going to drink, maybe you'll fall asleep and you'll miss all afternoon. So there's reasons why people why like to do it early. Here in the Shishiva, they have mincha early, right? One thirty. It's allowed. Some people say it's better for the Yeshiva schedule. That's enough of a reason to to, to dive. It's called mincha gdola. This is a later mincha. It's called mincha ktana. An earlier mincha is called mincha gdola. Oh. But uh, that's just fancy names. Earlier and later, they're both kosher. Okay. But you should really try to finish before the shkia. But there are opinions that say there's a later sunset. The sunset is not the way we described it up till now, right? What do we have here? The sunrise. So here we're going to do that the sun uh, falls underneath right. the horizon. You don't see any radiance. It's just a tiny little bit. As it sets, that's the end time of that's the, right, the, the sun going down. Something coming up. Right. Yeah. So it's okay. Sometimes I make this choice. Uh, I have my mincha here in the Beit Knesset, mm-hmm. uh, not here in, in, in the yeshiva, but outside. And I say, okay, I'm going uh, one hour before we have Avit, and after mincha I have time to pray other things, and mm-hmm. then I sure. stay there for the Avit. 
Many people it's do okay. that. That's ideal. In between Mincha and Aramid is usually yes. half an hour. Yes. You have to be finished the Mincha by 7.47. You should ideally not start Aramid until age 15. Okay. So sometimes there's a Shi'ul. Sometimes mm-hmm. people sit and learn. Right. Some people... This uh, is okay. That's good. That's ideal. Okay. Then, then only problem. when the stars come out, then you got a week with the Shema together, yes. and you're all, it's all uh, one package deal. It's possible to daven a week earlier. Some places they do it for the sake of convenience, and it's allowed. The only problem is that you have to say Shema again right. later on. Okay? But we also say the Shema before we're going to sleep. That's correct. Some people say we rely on that Shema that we say before we go to sleep. And usually we don't say the full three passages. That's why you, you have to be aware. But uh, good. Other questions? Yes, Israel. Um, if the payah, uh, I, I go into the silicon, and if people start the payah, uh, when we, I, I should join or cannot before Shema or when? Uh, what's the word you're saying? Pay, pay prayer? Prayer. Prayer. What about the prayer? Yeah, you're saying, yeah, yeah, ah, if you come and you're not at the same time as the synagogue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it already start the uh, prayer. So, right. some people can sit, can join some of these before right. the Shabbat. Right. Right. So this is what we have to learn more. We started to say that there's some things you can skip yeah. from the Siddur, yeah. some things you can't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're going to keep learning about the Siddur. So far, what have you learned about the first hundred pages? Mm-hmm. Well, can you skip any of it? If you want to join the community, can you skip Adon Olam? Mm-hmm. What did I say? Yes. Yes, you can. Can you skip Korbanot? Yes, yes. yes, you can. If you want to join the community and you came late, can you skip Berakot HaShachar? The morning blessings? No. 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 <laughs> that you can't skip. You have to say it quickly yourself. Yeah. And then you can think about joining. Right. So you have to know the different parts of the prayers, which can be skipped. Can you skip Matopu or Alecha Yaakov? You can. You can. That's right. Can you skip um, <clears throat> the little prayer before you put on your talit? Which little prayer? There's there's a little prayer in the Siddur before you put on the Talit, before you put on the Tefillin. No, you cannot skip it. You can. You can? Oh. Just not the Bracha. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. The Baruch Ata Hashem, that you say. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. But there's also a little prayer oh. about the meaning of the Talit, about ah, the meaning of the Tefillin. Okay. Yes. That you can skip yeah. if you need to rush to join the community. Let's move on and we'll start talking about the rest of